Success is the steady progress toward your own personal goals. So, what then is failure? Is it working on a project that ends with poor results? No, of course not. Is it launching a new product that fails miserably in the marketplace? No, of course not. Is it doing the best you possibly can with your kids and having them disappoint you in a very personal way? No, of course not. There's no failure in pouring your heart and soul and energy into something that didn't work. Rather, failure is not trying at all. If success is the steady progress toward your own personal goals, then failure is no progress at all. None, not even trying. Success and failure are always linked together. Success and failure are always linked to ambition. And let's remember, success is doing, failure is not doing. It's that simple. Tom Peters, world-renowned author and management expert, recently said, there is only one way to be in serious trouble today, and that is not to be trying, not to be failing, not to be stretching yourself. Success is a doing. You've got to actually do it. Activity is high priority in the life process. To try and get maximum benefit out of what we have available, our resources, our skills, our knowledge, and our talents. Success is a doing that tries to get maximum benefit out of what we have available. Benjamin Disraeli, former Prime Minister of England, once said, Nothing can resist a human will that will stake even its existence on its purpose. I'll do it or die. What a powerful set of words. We've already talked about resolve, doing it until. But here's what else Resolve says. Resolve says, I will. Two of the most powerful words in our language. The formula for disaster kid, should, don't. Here's the formula for fortune. Kid, should, will. Kid means I can. Should means I ought to. But will means I will. I will are two of the most powerful words in the language. The man says, I will climb the mountain. They say it's too high, it's too difficult, it's too rocky, it's never been done before. The man says, hey, it's my mountain. I'll climb it. Pretty soon, you'll see me waving from the top or dead aside, because I'm not coming back until I've done it. It's powerful. There are several studies that show the greatest achievers aren't those who fail the least. No, the greatest achievers are those least frightened of failure. They're willing to take on the challenge without the guarantee of success. Seeing the end but not sure when it will be or where it will be. Although success and failure go hand in hand, many people have a problem with failure. They think it's a bad word, has a bad connotation. They don't see it as a stepping stone, they see it as an end result. Quite often, success requires failure, sometimes many failures. In every scientific discovery, there were dozens or hundreds of failures before one success. Without failure, Opportunity cannot be created. Without failure, there can be no success. What is the measure of success? How do you know if you're really successful? How do you know, especially when your success could be so vastly different from someone else's success? Here's how you measure results. Making measurable progress in reasonable time. That's all life asks. Making measurable progress in reasonable time. Though, so, you've got to be reasonable with time. Don't be unreasonable with time. Parents, don't be unreasonable with time. Managers, brokers, business associates have a little patience. You can't ask somebody every five minutes, how are you doing? That's too soon. The guy says, I haven't left the building yet. Give me a break. So, five minutes is too soon to ask. So, five years is what? Too long and too late. So, what is reasonable time to ask for results as a measure of progress? Here's number one. At the end of the day, you can't let more than a day go by without getting some things done. Some letters written. Having a conversation with your son or daughter. You can't postpone the important more than a day. When you work on the job, there are some things you've got to get done within a day. You've got to make some calls within a day. Your health disciplines, you've got to get those done within a day. You can't carry over. You can't say, well, I'll eat nine apples ten days from now. No, it's an apple a day. Some things you've got to get done within a day. So, at five minutes to midnight and you haven't gotten your apple in yet, munch away and get it done. Done, a day. Here's what's next, a week. Some things you've got to get done within a week. Stuff on the job, calls made, activities. A week is a good chunk of time. Can't let more than a week go by without taking a look and a measure to see how you're doing. John joins this little sales company. 
He's supposed to make 10 calls the first week just to get acquainted out there in the marketplace. Would it be legitimate to call John in on Friday and say, how many calls did you make? That's legitimate. It's legitimate time to ask for a measurable amount of progress. He's supposed to make 10 calls. Come Friday, how many calls did you make? John says, well, you say, John, well, it won't fit in my little box here. I just need a number. Now, John starts with a story. You say, John, the reason I made this little box so small is so a story won't fit. I don't need a story, I just need a number. Now, here's one of the better phrases to take home. The numbers tell us the whole story. On you, personally, the numbers tell us the whole story. Success is a numbers game. There are three important questions to ask yourself in this area. Here's number one. How much money have you saved and invested during your career? Second question. In the last 90 days, how many books have you read to invest in the miracle of your mind? Third question. In the last six months, how many classes have you taken to improve your skills or to develop new skills for your future and your family? I'm telling you, numbers tell us everything. Success is a numbers game. You've got to make progress. You've got to make progress in reasonable time. You've got to take a look at the numbers and see how you're doing. It's the name of the game. How often should you weigh the new baby? Well, you say, I'll weigh the new baby next spring. No, you can't wait until next spring. Don't you have to weigh the new baby often? And the answer is, yes, of course, to see whether it's gaining weight or it's losing weight. What if it's losing weight? The alarm bells have got to go off. You can't let a little baby lose weight very long. It's called disaster. These numbers are important. How often should you check the corporation to see if it's healthy or not? You say, well, in a couple of years, we'll get all the accountants together. No, you'll be out of business. In Las Vegas, the big gambling houses, guess how often they put together a financial statement to see where they are? Several times a day. Why? So much is happening. If you don't learn when to shut down some of those tables, you'll be out of business by midnight. You can't wait till midnight. You can't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow's too late. You've got to know the numbers. What is your cholesterol count? You don't know and you don't care. You've just got your fingers crossed for the future. We better come and get your family and take them to safety. Come on, be responsible for the set of your own sale. Leave it to no one else but yourself and learn to refine these numbers for yourself. How many pounds overweight should you be at age 50? John says, well, I've got big bones. Well, we'll give you 10. 10 pounds sterling for big bones. But hey, 25, 30 pounds sterling, and we've got to turn on the caution light. At home and at the office, somebody says, what's that flashing caution light? John's up about 25, 35 pounds sterling. Five pounds sterling, and the flashing red light comes on at home and at the office. Somebody says, what's that flashing red light? Don's up about 40, 50 pounds sterling. I'm asking you to take charge of your own life. Be responsible for your own retirement. Be responsible for your own health. Don't just drift along with the crowd. Those who don't care to be responsible about the number, meticulous about the numbers. Some of these numbers have got to be coming down, like your cholesterol. Some of these numbers have got to be going up, like the number of books in your library. Don't be satisfied until you've looked at all your own numbers and be responsible. Don't wait for somebody to come along. What if nobody comes along? You've got to be responsible yourself. Results are the name of the game. Let's check the numbers. Don't be satisfied with anything less than the best of numbers. Jesus walked along one day and saw a fig tree. Interesting story. And as Jesus looked suspiciously at this fig tree, he said to his disciples, does that fig tree have any figs? Do you think that's an important question? It is. For a fig tree, it's an all-important question. Does it have any figs? His disciples said, no, sir. Of all the trees you were to pick, this particular fig tree does not have any figs. The story says Jesus lost his cool, one of the few times he lost his cool. Why? I think to make a point. A fig tree without figs is unacceptable. Jesus said, if that fig tree doesn't have any figs, I suggest you probably take it out. And he added, why let it take up the ground? So, you've got to get all your people together every once in a while and say, today, we're counting the figs. What for? 
to see who gets to stay. Why? It's the name of the game. Results. Now, what if your results are not that good right now? What if you're going through some tough times and aren't quite sure what to do next? You know why I do seminars and lectures and write books and audio programs? So I can attend them all myself, read it again myself, listen again myself. I don't do it just to hear myself talk, and I don't do it for the money. I do it because the teacher always receives the greatest lessons. He seeks to teach others what's the best way out of a blue mood. Talk somebody else through theirs. What's the best way out of a mental energy slump? Talk somebody else through theirs. What's the best way to start solving your own problems? Talk to somebody else about theirs. Why? Because when you start talking someone else through their blue mood or their mental slump or their problem, you'll hear yourself say amazing things. You'll hear all the knowledge that you've gathered come out to help this other person, and it will ultimately help you by hearing it again. It just works that way. It's often easier to tap our resources for somebody else than it is to tap them for ourselves. Sometimes defeat is the best beginning. Why? Well, for one, if you're at the very bottom, there's only one way to go, up. But more importantly, if you're flat on your back, mentally and financially, you'll usually become sufficiently disgusted to reach down deep inside yourself and pull out miracles, pull out talents, and pull out abilities and pull out desires and determination. When you're flat broke or flat miserable, you'll eventually become so disgusted that you'll pull out the basic essentials required to make everything better. And it's in the face of adversity that things begin to change, that you begin to change. With enough disgust, desire, and determination to change your life, you'll start saying, I've had it. Enough of this, no more, never again. Here's where the miracles begin. I've had it, enough, no more, never again. These words and these thoughts really rattle the power of time and fate and circumstances. And these three things, time and fate and circumstances, all get together and say, okay, okay, we can see that we have no power here. We're facing some major resolve. This guy is not going to give up. He's had it. He's done with all this nonsense. We better step aside and let this guy get by. Resolve, inspiration through disgust. But a lot of people don't change themselves. They wait for circumstances to change, the government to change, life to change. What they do? Not much. These poor unfortunate folks accept their defeats and wallow in their self-pity. Why? Because they refuse to take control of the situation. They refuse to take control of their life, their career, their health, their relationships, their finances. They refuse to take control and take responsibility and get sufficiently disgusted to change it. But if you are disgusted, if you are making changes, if this program finds you in the middle of your own personal slump, then I have some words to offer you. Your present failure is a temporary condition. It is only a temporary condition. You will rebound from failure just as surely as you gravitated into failure. Somebody once suggested to me in about a failure that I should tell myself that this too shall pass. I firmly believe that you're only given as much as you can handle, as much negativity, as much failure, as much disappointment. This too shall pass. If you grasp for a new beginning, if you pull yourself up and move back into the world with a plan, though as foolish as it might sound, be thankful for your current limitations or failures, for they are building blocks from which to create greatness. You can go where you want to go. You can do what you want to do. You can become what you want to become. You can do it all starting now, starting right where you are. A father talks about his daughter. She's gone through some pretty tough times, and as he tells it, she's a pretty tough person. He has a unique way of describing his daughter's situation, though. While most parents would be frantic over their kids who are grown and gone, this man just smiles and says that his daughter is like a frog in a jar of cream. She keeps kicking and kicking and kicking, and pretty soon the milk will turn into a lump of butter, and she'll be able to jump out. That's an interesting way to look at it, an interesting illustration of tenacity. But that's how it works. You've got to keep trying and trying and trying, You've got to have enough resolve to do it until. So be grateful for adversity, but for your future, make it work for you, not against you. Make your failures give birth to great opportunity, not prolonged agony. Make your disgust lead to inspiration, not depression. The world will willingly sit by and let you wallow in your sorrows until you die broken alone. And here's what else the world will do. 
The world will step aside and let you by once you decide that your present situation is only temporary. Once you decide to get back on your feet and make your mark. The world doesn't care which choice you made. To stop here and to go on. The world doesn't really care. So you have to. You have to care in your own enlightened self-interest. Give a run at adventure. Keep your eyes firmly on the achievement, on your ambition, and not mere existence and self-pity. Make a commitment to excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, it's truly an honor to stand before you today and share some timeless principles that have the power to transform your life. I want to talk to you about one of the most crucial aspects of your journey towards success. The profound art of working on yourself for personal development. You see, life is not just about the goals we achieve or the accomplishments we accumulate. It's about the person we become in the process. Personal development is the key that unlocks the door to a life of fulfillment, abundance, and lasting success. So let's delve into the essence of what it means to work on yourself and embark on a journey of continuous improvement. First and foremost, understand that personal development is not a destination, it's a lifelong journey. You are a work in progress, and each day presents an opportunity for refinement and growth. Success is not something you pursue, it's something you attract by the person you become. The foundation of personal development lies in the commitment to becoming the best version of yourself. Now, let's explore some key principles that can guide you on this transformative journey. 1. Set clear goals. Begin with the end in mind. Define your aspirations and set clear, compelling goals for yourself. Your goals act as a roadmap, guiding your actions and decisions. Without a destination, you risk wandering aimlessly. 2. Continuous learning. Commit to lifelong learning. The more you learn, the more you earn, not just financially, but in terms of wisdom and personal growth. Invest in yourself through books, seminars, and mentors. Take advantage of every opportunity to expand your knowledge. 3. Personal discipline. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. Develop the discipline to do what needs to be done even when you don't feel like doing it. Success is not about luck, it's about consistent, disciplined effort. 4. Time management. Time is a precious resource, and how you use it determines your success. Learn to manage your time effectively, prioritize tasks, and focus on what truly matters. Time wasted is a gift you can never get back. 5. Surround yourself with the right people. Your environment and the people you associate with have a profound impact on your mindset and success. Surround yourself with individuals who inspire, challenge, and uplift you. 6. Take care of your health. Your body is the vehicle through which you navigate life's journey. Take care of it, eat well, exercise regularly, and get enough rest. A healthy body supports a healthy mind, and both are essential for sustained success. 7. Embrace failure as feedback. Failure is not the opposite of success, it's a part of it. Embrace failure as valuable feedback. Learn from your mistakes, adjust your course, and keep moving forward. 8. Develop a positive attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. Cultivate a positive mindset, even in the face of challenges. A positive attitude not only attracts success, but also makes the journey more enjoyable. 9. Practice gratitude. Gratitude is the key to a fulfilling life. Take time each day to reflect on the things you're grateful for. Appreciate the journey, celebrate small victories, and acknowledge the people who contribute to your success. 10. Contribute to others. True success is not just about personal gain. It's about contributing to others and making a positive impact. Use your success to uplift and inspire those around you. Which leads me to my next point. Books. Books are like mentors that stand the test of time. They are the accumulated wisdom of generations, the distilled experiences of the most accomplished minds. When you crack open the pages of a book, you are not just reading words. You are tapping into the collective knowledge of those who have walked the path of success before you. Allow me to share why reading is a profound mentor for your personal growth. 1. Access to Wisdom. Books are repositories of wisdom. Within their pages, you find insights, lessons, and principles that can guide you through the challenges of life. 2. Mentorship Beyond Boundaries Not everyone has the luxury of a personal mentor, but through books, 
you can access the mentorship of the most extraordinary individuals who have ever lived. Their guidance is just a page turn away. 3. Lifetime of learning. The learning doesn't end with formal education. It's a lifelong journey. Reading allows you to continually expand your knowledge base and stay ahead in a rapidly changing world. 4. Mental stimulation. Reading stimulates your intellect, sharpens your thinking, and expands your mental horizons. It fosters a curious and inquisitive mind. 5. Personal Development Toolbox. Books equip you with strategies, tactics, and mindsets that can propel you toward success. Your personal development toolbox is incomplete without a collection of books that inspire, challenge, and guide you. 6. Reflection and Contemplation. Books provide a space for contemplation, allowing you to pause, ponder, and internalize the lessons they offer. 7. Escape and Entertainment. Beyond the educational aspect, books offer an escape into different worlds and a source of entertainment. They provide a healthy diversion from the stresses of life, allowing you to recharge and rejuvenate. 8. Building Character. The characters in books often face challenges, setbacks, and triumphs. By following their journeys, you gain insights into human nature and the qualities that contribute to success. 9. Effective Communication. Reading enhances your language skills and communication abilities. It broadens your vocabulary and improves your ability to articulate ideas. 10. Legacy and Impact. Books have the power to leave a lasting legacy. By reading and absorbing the knowledge within them, you become part of a legacy of wisdom. In closing, the habit of reading is not just about flipping through pages. It's about tapping into the mentorship of the greatest minds, about acquiring the knowledge and wisdom that can shape your destiny. Make reading a non-negotiable part of your daily routine, and let books be your constant companions on the journey of personal growth and success. As I've said, success is not in what you have, but who you become. May your commitment to reading lead you to becoming the person you aspire to be. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Today we embark on a quest to uncover the blueprint for personal success, to discover the art of working hard on yourself and achieving your biggest goals. Now, let me ask you this. What is it that sets apart the few who rise to the pinnacle of achievement from the many who languish in mediocrity? The answer lies not in luck or circumstance, but in the relentless pursuit of personal growth and self-improvement. You see, my friends, the key to unlocking your full potential begins with a commitment to work on yourself. It starts with the recognition that you are the architect of your destiny, the master of your fate. As the great philosopher Socrates once said, know thyself. To embark on this journey of self-discovery, you must first define your goals with absolute clarity. You must know precisely what it is that you want to achieve, for without a clear destination, any road will take you there. Write down your goals, visualize them, and let them become a burning obsession that drives you forward each and every day. But setting goals is just the beginning. To achieve them, you must cultivate the habits and disciplines that will propel you towards success. As I often say, success is neither magical nor mysterious. Success is the natural consequence of consistently applying basic fundamentals. So, what are these fundamentals, you may ask? They are the habits of mind and action that separate the extraordinary from the ordinary. They are the habits of lifelong learning, of taking relentless action, of seeking feedback and course correction, and of maintaining an unwavering commitment to excellence. But perhaps the most important fundamental of all is the habit of personal development. You see, my friends, the greatest investment you can ever make is in yourself. Commit to lifelong learning, to continuous growth, and to becoming the best version of yourself each and every day. Read books, attend seminars, seek out mentors who have achieved the success you desire, and never stop learning. As the great entrepreneur Warren Buffett once said, the more you learn, the more you earn. But personal development is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's also about developing the mindset of success. Cultivate a positive attitude, banish self-doubt and fear and embrace the belief that you are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. Success is not a destination, but a journey. Along the way, you will encounter obstacles and setbacks, but it is in overcoming these challenges that you will grow and develop the resilience and strength of character necessary to achieve your goals.
I urge you, my friends, to make a commitment today to work on yourself, to pursue your goals with unwavering determination, and to never settle for anything less than your true potential. For as the great poet Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Which leads me to my next point. You see, I firmly believe that the key to success and fulfillment in life lies in our commitment to constantly working on ourselves and growing as individuals. Now, you might be wondering, why is personal development so important? Well, let me tell you, my friends, personal development is the cornerstone of success in every area of life. Whether it's achieving your career goals, building meaningful relationships, or finding inner peace and happiness. Personal development is the key that unlocks the door to a life of abundance and fulfillment. But what exactly do I mean by personal development? Simply put, personal development is the process of improving yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. It's about expanding your knowledge and skills, cultivating a positive mindset and becoming the best version of yourself that you can be. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I'm already pretty happy with who I am. Why do I need to work on myself? Well, let me tell you that personal development is not just for those who are unhappy or dissatisfied with their lives. It's for everyone who wants to reach their full potential and live life to the fullest. You see, the truth is that we can always be better. No matter how successful or accomplished we may be, there is always room for growth and improvement. As the saying goes, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. But personal development is not just about achieving external success or reaching our goals. It's also about becoming the kind of person we want to be, someone who is confident, compassionate, resilient, and full of gratitude. It's about cultivating virtues like discipline, courage, and integrity that will serve us well in all areas of life. So, how do we go about working on our personal development? Well, my friends, it starts with a commitment to lifelong learning. Read books, attend seminars, take courses, and seek out mentors who can help you grow and expand your horizons. As the great philosopher Socrates once said, education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. But personal development is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's also about taking action. As I often say, success is not to be pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. So, set goals for yourself, make a plan, and take consistent action towards achieving them. And don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and embrace new challenges and opportunities for growth. Remember that personal development is a journey, not a destination. It's something that we must continue to work on every single day for the rest of our lives. As the great author and speaker Zig Ziglar once said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So, I urge you, my friends, to make a commitment today to always work on your personal development, to make it a priority in your life, and watch as it transforms not only your external circumstances but also your inner world. For, as I always say, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development, because success is something you attract by the person you become. Thank you, my friends, and may you continue to grow and thrive on your journey of personal development.